I ordered some crazy looking science toys. Let's try them out and you can let me know which is your favourite. The first one came in this box. It's well protected with some polystyrene and inside is this curious glass object. There's this bulb at the bottom which houses some blue liquid and a tube which rises up from here around a couple of U-bends and forms another glass bulb at the top. Now watch what happens if I sit it on the palm of my hand. After just a few seconds the fluid starts to rise up the tube out of the bottom bulb, work its way around the U-bends and fills up the top bulb. But not only that, then it appears to start bubbling and boiling. This footage has been speeded up slightly, but the whole process took about half a minute. And if you wrap your hands around the bottom bulb, the process happens even faster, because you're conducting even more heat. To reverse the cycle, let go of the bottom bulb and hold the top one, and the fluid transfers back down to the bottom. So how does it work? So the fluid inside is actually a volatile mixture of methylene chloride and it has a boiling point of just above room temperature. When we sit the glass on our hands, or we can even just warm it up with our fingers, heat is transferred from your body which causes the liquid to boil. The gas which is produced from the liquid evaporating builds up pressure in this bottom glass bowl and this pressure increase results in the liquid being pushed up the tube. I love the little U-bend it goes round. As the pressure pushes the last bit up, the vapour produced from the residual bit of fluid left behind rises up forming bubbles in this evaporation condensation cycle. <laughs> we can just watch as it boils. When we release our hand, the gas condenses back into a liquid again and it flows back into the lower bulb. Now check this out, water droplets flowing upwards. This isn't really a science toy, it's more of a gadget. It's an anti-gravity water humidifier. I ordered it online and it cost me £34. There's a link in the description. It says it produces a fine spray, it's counter gravity, contracted design and time to show. So some interesting translations. Let's open it up. It comes together with some instructions and a power lead and this is the unit. There's some rubber feet underneath to help it grip. There's this kind of hole here which I suppose the water kind of rises up from and this hole at the top here and I think these are LEDs. There's another hole here from the top where the vapour comes out from and a touch sensor on and off button here and is powered by this USB-C port at the back. So to use it we just unscrew the bottom piece like this and you can see here there's some wires and a pipe and I think this is a water pump. So the instructions say to fill up the sump with some warm water at about 40 degrees C, then refit the top part and plug it into the USB port, then it's ready to use. There's even a little clock in the top which you can set with these touch sensitive buttons and just touch the power button to switch it on. Straight away it starts humming and water vapour starts coming out of the top and if we look at it from the side you can see these water droplets magically rising up from the base. They kind of get sucked in at the top, it really looks incredible. I'm putting it against this dark background to make it stand out even more. It's such an intriguing device. The sort of thing you could watch for ages. It produces a large cloud of water vapour, which apparently can help things like dry sinuses, nasal congestion and breaking up mucus, and cracked lips. But how does it seem to completely defy gravity? There's no suction going on here, and actually even though it doesn't appear so, the water is running downwards from the top to the bottom. The clever part are these LED lights. They illuminate the falling water drops at a very specific frequency. And so to our eye, and to the camera, the drops appear to be slowly rising out from the bottom instead of falling from the top. That really is pretty clever. I can even touch them with my finger and you can see the water actually running off my finger and flowing down to the base. It all goes back down into the sump and that little pump that we saw inside lifts it back to the top. But now watch what happens if I take a drinking glass and place it underneath. Of course the glass starts filling up but the water appears to be continuing to rise up out of the glass as it's filling up. That's crazy. And now if we take a bright flashlight we can actually overpower the LEDs and break the illusion. Now we can see the water stream as it's running down from the top to the bottom and we can even just press the power button again which turns off the lights so we can just see the water stream. What a cool device. Have you tried using a humidifier? Let me know in the comments. Next we're going to take a look at this ferro fluid bottle. It comes in this nice little box and as you'd expect it's well packaged. Here's the bottle and it comes with a couple of magnets. The bottle is filled with a clear suspension liquid and a small amount of this black ferro fluid. Now look what happens when we introduce a magnet. It starts to spring into life and form these magnificent shapes. We can move it around and we get these distinctive black spikes. If we vary the proximity of the magnet, we alter the size of the spikes and the quantity. And we can even use two magnets and watch as it dances between them. Ferro fluid is a liquid that contains nanometer sized particles of a magnetite, usually iron filings. So it's basically a magnetic fluid 
fluid. It was invented by a NASA engineer in 1963. I also found if you keep agitating it really quickly with a magnet, you can break it all up into loads of tiny little bits. Check that out, it's almost like a snow globe. Then, of course, reintroduce the magnet, and it all collects back together. Pretty cool, huh? This was expensive at a cost of £28, but it is really cool. But for a cost of only £6, I found this magnetic putty. Open up the tin, and again we've got a magnet, there's a couple of wobbly eyes, here's the putty, and a set of instructions. It does say this isn't for children under the age of 14, because the magnets are dangerous if swallowed. Let's open up the putty and take a look. Well, here it is. It feels mouldable, but not really that soft. It's definitely not at all a slime. It's more like a plasticine or something. You can pull it and stretch it, and I found it becoming slightly more pliable as it becomes warmer. It's like a cool little fidget toy. You can, of course, roll it and squidge it and shape it however you like. And if you roll it into a ball, it'll even bounce. But let's test it with a magnet. Well, you can see it sticks to it, but it's not really stretching it at all. If I pull out a little bit, though... Aha, there we go. Well, you can see it's working. It's definitely attracted to it and slowly pulling. I decided to roll out a few pieces to make this little spider. Of course, you need to add the eyes. And let's see if the magnet does anything to the legs. No, it's not even lifting one up. I think they're stuck down a bit onto the table. But I'm going to give it a go with this really powerful set of magnets, which I stuck together myself. Yeah, look at that. It's definitely pulling away at it. You do need to be careful not to get the magnet too close, or else it'll just stick to it. It's definitely stretching out. <laughs> oh well. It's easy enough to pull it back off the magnet if it does become attached. And if I try from the top, <laughs> it picks the whole thing up. But look at this, you can really see how it's stretching it out. It's pulling it right back. And even the magnet they provide us with is good fun, despite it not being quite so powerful. It's a cool little product. The next science toy I want to show you came in this little box. I opened it up and it's nicely wrapped up in this paper. Check this out. It's a translucent acrylic cube with different colour surfaces. There's three different colours, cyan, magenta and yellow, and the face opposite the one we're looking straight at has the same colour, so when we look through it looks solid. But as we move and rotate the cube to change the angle, we start to mix the colours and make new ones. We can blend the primary colours to make a whole array of others, and as the light shines through and mixes with the colours, it really is very satisfying to watch and play with. It feels like a really solid item this. This one is 50mm square, but you can can get different sizes. It's a really cool little thing to have on your desk, just to pick up and play with a bit. The edges are nice and well cut, and it feels solid and durable. Next I'm going to try out this mini electrifying plasma orb. Neon gases inside the orb create colourful streams of plasma from the central electrode. Touch the orb and watch your finger become an electrical conductor right before your eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's a mini plasma ball which powers from a USB lead. Here's the lead, and we plug this end into the unit, and I'm plugging this end into a laptop. Flick the switch, and there we go. I really do love plasma balls, and the sphere on this one is about 3 inches in diameter. They're so cool to play with. Take your mind off work for a minute and absorb yourself with plasma. But as well as powering it from the USB lead, you can also power it from 4 AA batteries. There's a cover on the bottom, held closed with a screw, and now it's nice and portable. It's quite a nice novelty gift, but it does feel a bit cheaply made. <laughs> Mine doesn't even sit flat, it's got a bit of a wobble to it. And the other thing is, it's not particularly bright. It really does work best in low light. Now one of my favourite desk toys is this perpetual motion simulator. It's really cool. And so is this amazing spinning globe. And if you want to see more about them and how they work, you can click on the link here. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.